Are you curious where you can watch the latest episode of Kamen Rider and Sentai every week? Well, since there is no official release, you might have to resort to alternative methods. Personally, when I search for website to watch Tokusatsu, my top priority is to safeguard my personal data. That's why I rely on Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of today's video. With Surfshark, your online safety and privacy is paramount as it is effective at concealing your online activities through its VPN capabilities. By encrypting your internet traffic that nobody can prey into your online endeavors or track your digital whereabouts. Additionally, Surfshark enables you to virtually explore the world with a tap thanks to its ability to change your VPN address. By switching your location to anywhere in America, let's say, you can access at least over 10 Ultraman shows and movies or explore other Toku shows available on Tokushoutsu. You can poke around at the Japanese premium Bandai page and discover a captivating array of expensive children's toys. I highly recommend getting Surfshark VPN today as it comes with an extra free month. Simply click the link in the description and if you are unsettled Satisfy. Rest assured, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, why wait any longer? Take advantage of this fantastic offer and sign up now. It's an incredible opportunity for all of you, my fellow Tokusatsu fans. I love how much the GGF is unfolding to be a shady military organization with Amy investigating the GGF's Project 99 that her missing father worked on before he disappeared in the attack on the building that also is the same night where Gento and Blazer first met. It's kind of interesting seeing kind of everything unfold with V99 being the reason of all of the kaiju's awakening, almost like a radical destruction entity type of villain. This villain that never really shows his face but very much make his intention clear. I just wish that the show would have told us earlier about Amy's dad and his connection to the GGF because like that could have been an interesting little first nugget of information about her and also like he and Honaro being friends could have kind of led to this interesting relationship between those two early on in the show and Honaro appearing more and more in this episode was really fun mainly to actually try to stop Amy from her wild goose chase to find more stuff about her dad by warning her or Gento genuinely in like creepy scenes specifically telling Gento hey what she's doing isn't the right thing the thing that she's right now doing could actually break apart Scarred is extremely interesting and we got introduced to actually a semi new character but an old one in the world of Blazer, being the man behind Project V99, and that is Dobashi. He's interesting mainly because how Honaro kind of warns Amy about him, saying, hey, don't come near him, he's a dangerous man, but she does take the risk and go and meet him. And he was extremely nice and extremely welcoming, and he's like, oh, you, you're hiding something, like I don't know why. What? you're hiding something so probably and I'm a hundred percent sure about that project v99 was actually the GGF discovering the line of blazer and testing it to probably create a new weapon something went wrong and they accidentally released him because of that the attack of the building came in I think that's it and probably because of the big power surge of blazer being release all of the other monsters kind of slowly and slowly wake up and it's really cool to get actual confirmation of the waves 
like monsters that are very much a danger to Earth. Bazanga being the first, episode 13's monster being the second, and episode 14 being the third. How many more waves would we get? Like, that's really interesting. I am genuinely getting more and more interested in Blazer as the show goes on. And episode 14 was absolutely amazing. And when episode 14 was this espionage thriller trying to slowly and slowly unfolding some secrets inside of Blazer's universe, episode 15 shows how much you can do homages to old Showa or even Heisei era episode and doing it right because the show doesn't overdo it and also the show kind of gets how to do their homages correctly with this episode being completely a beat to beat remake of episode 15 of Ultraman 66 without Gavadon getting a new monster form and having a smaller group of kids and the biggest difference that one of the kids is Gento's son, which is something that I was waiting for. Full force, this episode was just fun, seeing the kids just play around with the kaiju that they created and try to hide it from the adults was like genuinely fun and I really enjoyed how much the episode kind of surrounded June because we never really get to learn or at least see more of Gento's personal life and what would be better than his own son and it shows that Gento isn't really in the category of best dad of the year he's not a complete piece of shit but he's very much dedicated to his job so that means that he probably needs to be from his actual family shows that he's not really the best dad. But I like that the episode never really focused on that. Gento understands that he's not the best dad, but he's trying to make it out. And I absolutely love it. And it's really interesting seeing the small little details that the show really paints about Gento's kind of personal life with June, with him kind of trying to be more apologetic but when Gavadon is created, he and the other two kids, the brother and sister, kind of start hanging out more and start to play with Gavadon. Like his wife, Gento's wife and June's mother kind of like is semi-relief that her son becomes more and more like a normal kid. It's an interesting thing to say, but it does really paint an interesting picture of Gento's personal life. And I really did enjoy the ending of the episode, kind of not really painting Ultraman as this kind of big hero, and in the end it's very much about Gavadon being this friendly monster that is now a consolation. Again, this episode was just like almost bit to bit homage to episode 16. I loved it, I don't know what to say more. And episode 16 shows how neat it is to have a diverse cast of kaiju, with episode 16's kaiju has this really cool ability of sending shockwaves to a person's brain, making him look like the thing they hate the most. Some for comedic effects, others to just reuse old monster suits to get a cheap pump, all references to earlier Blazer episode. But for Amy and Gento, it shows way more about their characters. Gento seeing Earth Garon being tattered and torn on fire shows how much he really cares about Scarred, and he is scared of actually like losing them as like he would lose his actual family, which is really interesting. While Amy sees herself. It could lead to some theories, maybe she sees herself as a monster, specifically what she done as an espionage soldier, maybe her want to be an espionage soldier drove her dad to be a part of the GGF and because of that he's gone, so like that's really interesting, 
but like those theories that I have right now are not fully concrete. So I don't know if I am completely right about them. And we just kind of need to wait until Project V99 and her dad would return kind of to the main plot because they're very much integral to the story. And I really did like not only some of the comedic scenes, specifically with Nagere, like him just being in the hospital calling Gento and the head nurse is like, what the hell are you doing, son? Get back to your room. <laughs> you too, get back to your room too. That was really funny, but also, like the scene where Amy is like going through this almost like like almost like a breakdown and she needs to calm herself down. Oh, this this is really cool. Like this actually like gives you almost the same feeling that she does. Shows how much the directing and the writing alongside the acting is like extremely good. Like I oh, I love this cast so much. And from now on, Earth Garon would be called Earthy because he actually has an AI assistant. I don't know if it's the right thing to have an AI assistant in a big robot, but okay. I really enjoyed Earthy and his voice and the way that he helps Amy actually pilot Earth Garon, not only for the first time alone, but for the first time, and now Earthy being an AI, 100% confirmed that he would be the thing that exposes Gento to be the host of Blazer. But yeah, overall, the last three weeks of Blazer were really good, and I am extremely happy to be back. So uh, thanks for Surfshark for sponsoring my channel, even though I didn't upload for the last three weeks. And thank you all, not only for watching this video, but also supporting Legacy of Ultraman Dyna. Like, that video took me way too long to produce. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Subscribe to my channel and have a great rest of your day.